Pearl Seidenstricker Buck, June 26, 1892 to March 6, 1973, also known by her Chinese name Sai Junju, Chinese Sai Jen Zhu, was an American writer and novelist. As the daughter of missionaries, Buck spent most of her life before 1934 in Zhenjiang, China. Her novel The Good Earth was the best-selling fiction book in the United States in 1931 and 1932 and won the Pulitzer Prize in 1932. In 1938, she was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature, "...for her rich and truly epic descriptions of peasant life in China and for her biographical masterpieces." She was the first American woman to win the Nobel Prize for Literature. After returning to the United States in 1935, she continued writing prolifically, became a prominent advocate of the rights of women and minority groups, and wrote widely on Chinese and Asian cultures, becoming particularly well known for her efforts on behalf of Asian and mixed race adoption. <laughs> Early life Originally named Comfort by her parents, Pearl Seidenstricker was born in Hillsboro, West Virginia, to Caroline Maud Stulting (1857–1921) and Dr. Absalom Seidenstricker. Her parents, Southern Presbyterian missionaries, traveled to China soon after their marriage on July 8, 1880, but returned to the United States for Pearl's birth. When Pearl was five months old, the family arrived in China, first in Wai'an and then in 1896 moved to Junjiang then often known as Jingjiang or, in the postal, Xinqiang, near Nanking, of her siblings who survived into adulthood. Edgar Seidenstricker had a distinguished career in epidemiology as an official with the Milbank Memorial Fund and Grace Seidenstricker Yaki was a writer who wrote young adult books and books about Asia under the pen name Cornelius Spencer. She recalled in her memoir that she lived in several worlds, one a small, white, clean Presbyterian world of my parents, and the other the big, loving Mary not too clean Chinese world, and there was no communication between them. The Boxer Uprising greatly affected the family, their Chinese friends deserted them, and Western visitors decreased. Her father, convinced that no Chinese could wish him harm, stayed behind as the rest of the family went to Shanghai for safety. A few years later, Pearl was enrolled in Miss Jewell's school there, and was dismayed at the racist attitudes of the other students, few of whom could speak any Chinese. Both of her parents felt strongly that Chinese were their equals, they forbade the use of the word heathen, and she was raised in a bilingual environment, tutored in English by her mother, in the local dialect by her Chinese playmates, and in classical Chinese by a Chinese scholar named Mr. Kung. She also read voraciously, especially, in spite of her father's disapproval, the novels of Charles Dickens, which she later said she read through once a year for the rest of her life. In 1911, Pearl left China to attend Randolph Macon Woman's College in Lynchburg, Virginia, in the United States, graduating Phi Beta Kappa in 1914 and a member of Kappa Delta Sorority. Although she had not intended to return to China, much less become a missionary, she quickly applied to the Presbyterian board when her father wrote that her mother was seriously ill. From 1914 to 1932, she served as a Presbyterian missionary, but her views later became highly controversial during the fundamentalist modernist controversy, leading to her resignation. Topic: <laughs> Career in China. In 1914, Pearl returned to China. She married an agricultural economist missionary, John Lossing Buck, on May 30, 1917, and they moved to Suzhou, Anhui Province, a small town on the Wai River not to be confused with the better-known Suzhou in Jiangsu Province. This region she describes in her books The Good Earth and Sons. From 1920 to 1933, the Bucks made their home in Nanjing, on the campus of the University of Nanking, where they both had teaching positions. She taught English literature at the private, church-run University of Nanking, Jinling College and at the National Central University. In 1920, the Bucks had a daughter, Carol, afflicted with phenylketonuria. In 1921, Buck's mother died of a tropical disease, sprue, and shortly afterward her father moved in. In 1924, they left China for John Buck's year of sabbatical and returned to the United States for a short time, during which Pearl Buck earned her master's degree from Cornell University. In 1925, the Bucks adopted Janice, later surnamed Walsh. 
That autumn, they returned to China. The tragedies and dislocations that Buck suffered in the 1920s reached a climax in March 1927, during the Nanking Incident. In a confused battle involving elements of Chiang Kai shek's nationalist troops, communist forces, and assorted warlords, several Westerners were murdered. Since her father Absalom insisted, as he had in 1900 in the face of the boxers, the family decided to stay in Nanjing until the battle reached the city. When violence broke out, a poor Chinese family invited them to hide in their hut while the family house was looted. The family spent a day terrified and in hiding, after which they were rescued by American gunboats. They traveled to Shanghai and then sailed to Japan, where they stayed for a year, after which they moved back to Nanjing. Pearl later said that this year in Japan showed her that not all Japanese were militarists. When she returned from Japan in late 1927, Pearl devoted herself in earnest to the vocation of writing. Friendly relations with prominent Chinese writers of the time, such as Xu Jimo and Lin Yutang, encouraged her to think of herself as a professional writer. She wanted to fulfill the ambitions denied to her mother, but she also needed money to support herself if she left her marriage, which had become increasingly lonely, and since the mission board could not provide it, she also needed money for Carol's specialized care. Pearl went once more to the States in 1929 to find long-term care for Carol, and while there, Richard J. Walsh, editor at John Day Publishers in New York, accepted her novel East Wind, West Wind. She and Richard began a relationship that would result in marriage and many years of professional teamwork. Back in Nanking, she retreated every morning to the attic of her university bungalow and within the year completed the manuscript for The Good Earth. When John Lossing Buck took the family to Ithaca the next year, Pearl accepted an invitation to address a luncheon of Presbyterian women at the Astor Hotel in New York City. Her talk was titled, Is There a Case for the Foreign Missionary? and her answer was a barely qualified, No. She told her American audience that she welcomed Chinese to share her Christian faith, but argued that China did not need an institutional church dominated by missionaries who were too often ignorant of China and arrogant in their attempts to control it. When the talk was published in Harper's Magazine, the scandalized reaction led Pearl to resign her position with the Presbyterian Board. In 1934, Pearl left China, believing she would return, while John Lossing Buck remained. <laughs> Career in the United States In 1935 the Bucks divorced in Reno, Nevada, and she married Richard Walsh that same day. He offered her advice and affection which, her biographer concludes, helped make Pearl's prodigious activity possible. The couple lived in Pennsylvania until his death in 1960. During the Cultural Revolution, Buck, as a preeminent American writer of Chinese village life, was denounced as an American cultural imperialist. Buck was heartbroken when she was prevented from visiting China with Richard Nixon in 1972. Her 1962 novel Satan Never Sleeps described the communist tyranny in China. Following the communist revolution in 1949, Buck was repeatedly refused all attempts to return to her beloved China and therefore was compelled to remain in the United States for the rest of her life. Pearl S. Buck died of lung cancer on March 6, 1973, in Danby, Vermont, and was interred in Green Hills Farm in Percasey, Pennsylvania. She designed her own tombstone. Her name was not inscribed in English on her tombstone. Instead, the grave marker is inscribed with Chinese characters representing the name Pearl Seidenstricker. <inaudible> Nobel Prize in Literature In 1938 the Nobel Prize Committee in awarding the prize said, by awarding this year's prize to Pearl Buck for the notable works which pave the way to a human sympathy passing over widely separated racial boundaries and for the studies of human ideals which are a great and living art of portraiture, the Swedish Academy feels that it acts in harmony and accord with the aim of Alfred Nobel's dreams for the future. In her speech to the Academy, she took as her topic, the Chinese novel. She explained, I am an American by birth and by ancestry. But, my earliest knowledge of story, of how to tell and write stories, came to me in China." After an extensive discussion of classic Chinese novels, especially Romance of the Three Kingdoms, All Men Are Brothers, and Dream of the Red Chamber, she concluded that in China, "...the novelist did not have the task of creating art but of speaking to the people." 
Her own ambition, she continued, had not been trained toward the beauty of letters or the grace of art. In China, the task of the novelist differed from the Western artist. To farmers he must talk of their land, and to old men he must speak of peace, and to old women he must tell of their children, and to young men and women he must speak of each other. And like the Chinese novelist, she concluded, I have been taught to want to write for these people. If they are reading their magazines by the million, then I want my stories there rather than in magazines read only by a few. Humanitarian efforts and later life Buck was highly committed to a range of issues that were largely ignored by her generation. Many of her life experiences and political views are described in her novels, short stories, fiction, children's stories, and the biographies of her parents entitled Fighting Angel on Absalom and The Exile on Kerry. She wrote on diverse subjects, including women's rights, Asian cultures, immigration, adoption, missionary work, war, the atomic bomb, command the morning, and violence. She was involved in the charity relief campaign for the victims of the 1931 China floods, writing a series of short stories describing the plight of refugees, which were broadcast on the radio in the United States and later published in her collected volume The First Wife and Other Stories. In 1949, outraged that existing adoption services considered Asian and mixed-race children unadoptable, Buck co-founded Welcome House, Inc., the first international, interracial adoption agency, along with James A. Michener, Oscar Hammerstein II and his second wife Dorothy Hammerstein. In nearly five decades of work, Welcome House has placed over 5,000 children. In 1964, to support kids who were not eligible for adoption, Buck established the Pearl S. Buck Foundation now called Pearl S. Buck International to address poverty and discrimination faced by children in Asian countries. In 1964, she opened the Opportunity Center and Orphanage in South Korea, and later offices were opened in Thailand, the Philippines, and Vietnam. When establishing Opportunity House, Buck said, the purpose less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 as to publicize and eliminate injustices and prejudices suffered by children who because of their birth are not permitted to enjoy the educational social economic and civil privileges normally accorded to children in 1960 after a long decline in health her husband richard died she renewed a warm relation with william ernest hawking who died in 1966 Buck then withdrew from many of her old friends and quarreled with others. In 1962 Buck asked the Israeli government for clemency for Adolf Eichmann, the Nazi war criminal that was complicit in the deaths of 5 million Jews during World War II, Cesarani 2005, pp. 319-320. In the late 1960s, Buck toured West Virginia to raise money to preserve her family farm in Hillsboro, West Virginia. Today the Pearl S. Buck birthplace is a historic house museum and cultural center. She hoped the house would belong to everyone who cares to go there and serve as a gateway to new thoughts and dreams and ways of life. Long before it was considered fashionable or politically safe to do so, Buck challenged the American public by raising consciousness on topics such as racism, sex discrimination and the plight of Asian war children. During her life, Buck combined the careers of wife, mother, author, editor, international spokesperson, and political activist. <laughs> Final years In the mid-1960s, Buck increasingly came under the influence of Theodore Harris, a former dance instructor, who became her confidant, co-author, and financial advisor. She soon depended on him for all her daily routines, and placed him in control of Welcome House and the Pearl S. Buck Foundation. Harris, who was given a lifetime salary as head of the foundation, created a scandal for Buck when he was accused of mismanaging the foundation, diverting large amounts of the foundation's funds for his friends and his own personal expenses, and treating staff poorly. Buck defended Harris, stating that he was very brilliant, very high-strung and artistic. Before her death Buck signed over her foreign royalties and her personal possessions to Creativity Inc., a foundation controlled by Harris, leaving her children a relatively small percentage of her estate. Buck died on March 6, 1973, from lung cancer. After her death, Buck's children contested the will and accused Harris of exerting undue influence 
on Buck during the last few years. Harris failed to appear at trial and the court ruled in the family's favor. Topic legacy Many contemporary reviewers were positive and praised her beautiful prose, even though her style is apt to degenerate into over-repetition and confusion. Robert Benchley wrote a parody of The Good Earth that focused on just these qualities. Peter Kahn, in his biography of Buck, argues that despite the accolades awarded to her, Buck's contribution to literature has been mostly forgotten or deliberately ignored by America's cultural gatekeepers. Kong Liao argues that Buck played a pioneering role in demythologizing China and the Chinese people in the American mind. Phyllis Bentley, in an overview of Buck's work published in 1935, was altogether impressed, but we may say at least that for the interest of her chosen material, the sustained high level of her technical skill, and the frequent universality of her conceptions, Mrs. Buck is entitled to take rank as a considerable artist. To read her novels is to gain not merely knowledge of China but wisdom about life. These works aroused considerable popular sympathy for China, and helped foment poor relations with Japan. Chinese American author Anchi Min said she broke down and sobbed after reading The Good Earth for the first time as an adult, which she had been forbidden to read growing up in China during the Cultural Revolution. Min said Buck portrayed the Chinese peasants with such love, affection and humanity and it inspired Min's novel Pearl of China 2010, a fictional biography about Buck. In 1973, Buck was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. Buck was honored in 1983 with a Five Great Americans series postage stamp issued by the United States Postal Service in 1999. She was designated a Women's History Month honoree by the National Women's History Project. Buck's former residence at Nanjing University is now the Sai Junju Memorial House along the west wall of the university's north campus. U.S. President George H. W. Bush toured the Pearl S. Buck House in October 1998. He expressed that he, like millions of other Americans, had gained an appreciation for the Chinese people through Buck's writing. Pearl Buck's papers and literary manuscripts are currently housed at Pearl S. Buck International and the West Virginia and Regional History Center. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Selected bibliography. Topic. <laughs> Autobiographies My Several Worlds, A Personal Record New York, John Day, 1954. A Bridge for Passing New York, John Day, 1962. Topic. Biographies The Exile 1936. Fighting Angel 1936. Topic. Novels East Wind, West Wind 1930. The House of Earth The Good Earth 1931. Sons 1933. A House Divided 1935. The Young Revolutionist 1932. The Mother 1933. All Men Are Brothers 1933, a translation of the Chinese classical prose epic Water Margin. This Proud Heart 1938. The Patriot 1939. Other Gods 1940. China Sky 1941. Dragon Seed 1942. The Promise 1943. China Flight 1943. The Townsman 1945 as John Sedges Portrait of a Marriage 1945 Pavilion of Women 1946 The Angry Wife 1947 as John Sedges Peony 1948 The Big Wave 1948 The Long Love 1949 as John Sedges The Bondmaid 1949 first published in Great Britain Kinfolk 1950 God's Men 1951 The Hidden Flower 1952 Come My Beloved 1953 Voices in the House 1953 as John Sedges The Beech Tree 1954 A Children's Story Imperial Woman 1956 Letter from Peking 1957 Command the Morning 1959 
Satan Never Sleeps 1962, see 1962 film Satan Never Sleeps The Living Reed 1963. Death in the Castle 1965. The Time is Noon 1966. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John 1967. The New Year 1968. The Three Daughters of Madame Liang 1969. Mandala 1970. The Goddess Abides 1972. All Under Heaven 1973. The Rainbow 1974. The Eternal Wonder, believed to have been written shortly before her death, published in October 2013. Topic: Nonfiction. Is there a case for foreign missions? New York, John Day, 1932. The Chinese novel, Nobel Lecture delivered before the Swedish Academy at Stockholm, December 12, 1938 New York, John Day, 1939. Of Men and Women 1941. What America Means to Me New York, John Day, 1943. Essays. Talk About Russia with Masha Scott 1945. Tell the People, Talks with James Yen about the Mass Education Movement New York, John Day, 1945. How It Happens, Talk About the German People, 1914-1933, with Erna von Pustow, 1947, with Eslanda Good Robeson. American Argument, New York, John Day, 1949. The Child Who Never Grew, 1950. The Man Who Changed China, The Story of Sun Yat-sen, 1953. For Spacious Skies, 1966. The People of Japan, 1966. To My Daughters, With Love 1967. The Kennedy Women 1970. China As I See It 1970. The Story Bible 1971. Pearl S. Buck's Oriental Cookbook 1972. Words of Love 1974. Topic. Short stories The First Wife and Other Stories 1933 Today and Forever Stories of China 1941 27 Stories 1943 Far and Near Stories of Japan China and America 1949 A Certain Star 1957 Christmas Miniature 1958 illustrated by Anna Marie Magenya Christmas Ghost 1961, illustrated by Anna Marie Magenya. Fourteen Stories, 1961. Portrait of a Marriage, 1961. Hearts Come Home and Other Stories, 1962. Stories of China, 1964. Escape at Midnight and Other Stories, 1964. The Good Deed, 1969. Once Upon a Christmas, 1972. East and West Stories 1975 Secrets of the Heart Stories 1976 The Lovers and Other Stories 1977 Mrs Stoner and the Sea and Other Stories 1978 The Woman Who Was Changed and Other Stories 1979 Christmas Day in the Morning The Refugee The Chinese Children Next Door For Children the Enemy. The Frill. The Golden Flower. The Old Demon. Topic. Awards Pulitzer Prize for the novel, The Good Earth 1932. William Dean Howells Medal 1935. Nobel Prize in Literature 1938. Topic. Museums and historic houses Several historic sites work to preserve and display artifacts from Pearl's profoundly multicultural life. The Pearl S. Buck Birthplace in Hillsboro, West Virginia Green Hills Farm in Bucks County, Pennsylvania The Junjong Pearl S. Buck Research Association in Junjong, China 3. 
Pearl S. Buck House in Nanjing University, China 4. The Pearl S. Buck Summer Villa, on Lushan Mountain in Yangshi Province, China The Pearl S. Buck Memorial Hall, Buchian City, South Korea Pearl S. Buck International, 520 Dublin Road, Percasey, Pennsylvania, 18944 USA, 215-249-0100 See also Christian feminism List of female Nobel laureates Notes Further reading Kahn, Peter J. 1996, Pearl S. Buck, A Cultural Biography, Cambridge, England, New York, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 0521560802 Hilary Sperling, Burying the Bones, Pearl Buck in China London, Profile, 2010. ISBN 9781861978288 Nora B. Sterling, Pearl Buck, A Woman in Conflict Piscataway, N.J., New Century Publishers, 1983 Elizabeth Johnston Lipscomb, Francis E. Webb and Peter J. Kahn, eds. The Several Worlds of Pearl S. Buck, Essays Presented at a Centennial Symposium, Randolph-Macon Women's College, March 26-28, 1992. Westport, C.T., Greenwood Press, Contributions in Women's Studies, 1994. ISBN 0313291527 Liao Kong. Pearl S. Buck, A Cultural Bridge Across the Pacific, Westport, C.T., London, Greenwood, Contributions to the Study of World Literature 77, 1997. ISBN 0-313-30146-8. Xi Lian. The Conversion of Missionaries, Liberalism in American Protestant Missions in China, 1907–1932, University Park, Pennsylvania State University Press, 1997. ISBN 0271016060X Roan, Jeanette 2010. Knowing China, Accuracy, Authenticity and the Good Earth. Envisioning Asia, on Location, Travel, and the Cinematic Geography of U.S. Orientalism. Ann Arbor, Michigan, University of Michigan Press. pp. 113-55. ISBN 0-472-05083-4. OCLC 671655107 via Project Muse, subscription required, help. Mari Yoshihara. Embracing the East, White Women and American Orientalism, New York, Oxford University Press, 2003. ISBN 0195145333 X Karen J. Leong. The China Mystique, Pearl S. Buck, Anna May Wong, Mei Ling Sung, and the Transformation of American Orientalism Berkeley, University of California Press, 2005. ISBN 0520244222 Theodore F. Harris In Consultation with Pearl S. Buck, Pearl S. Buck, A Biography John Day, June 1969. ISBN 978-0-381-98113-6 Theodore F. Harris In Consultation with Pearl S. Buck, Pearl S. Buck, A Biography. Volume 2, Her Philosophy as Expressed in Her Letters John Day, January 1971. ASIN BAA2PU Topic external links Pearl S. Buck Fuller Bibliography at WorldCat The Pearl S. Buck Birthplace in Pocahontas County, West Virginia Pearl S. Buck International The Junjong Pearl S. Buck Research Association, China in Chinese and English Official Nobel Prize website, Brief Biography University of Pennsylvania website dedicated to Pearl S. Buck Petri Lukonin. Pearl S. Buck Books and Writers Pearl S. Buck on IMDb National Trust for Historic Preservation on the Pearl S. Buck House Restoration Pearl Buck Interviewed by Mike Wallace on the Mike Wallace Interview February 8, 1958 Pearl S. Buck 5 Cent Issue. Great American Series. Smithsonian Institution National Postal Museum. Retrieved 10 March 2012. 
Pearl S. Buck at Find a Grave The Pearl S. Buck Literary Manuscripts and Other Collections at the West Virginia and Regional History Collection, WVU Libraries FBI Records, The Vault, Pearl Buck at FBI.gov Spring, Kelly. Pearl Buck. National Women's History Museum. Presentation by Peter Kahn on Pearl S. Buck, A Cultural Biography, March 5, 1997, C-SPAN.